goodness is in the heart of people. And in my country, I dream big for small people. My built philosophy is anchored on hope. Even bad people have at least some good in them. So they tell me, don't work with politicians because they're corrupt. I don't think there's a, anyone who's 100% corrupt. So if a person is 90% corrupt, I'll work with the 10%. And maybe in, in creating the, uh, the good that we can do together, the 10% will become 20 or 30%. That's what, we, what, that's what is meant by transformation. Nations are built through sacrifice, through hard work, not through money. Money are important. But the love that you have for the country, for the poor, uh, you know, the nobility of the work is priceless. And then when the work is transcendent, you, you inspire people. I'm uh, Tony Meloto, I'm 63 years old and uh, I took this uh, path uh, when I was 35 years old uh, as a father with three children at the time. I just wanted to uh, build uh, a kinder and a safer future for my children. Um, at that time, I didn't see much hope in the in the landscape, there was uh, extreme poverty and that was growing every day. We had uh, uh, politicians who didn't have the answers and there was a uh, lack of uh, integrity among in business and in politics. And uh, I've uh, decided that instead of just complaining about the problem, that I should tr start to look for solutions. So uh, from a life uh, in the corporate world to becoming uh, the typical businessman that uh, wanted, that just went for profit, for maximum profit, I realized that uh, I could pursue my own uh, personal ambition for success 
uh, in the traditional sense, but it will not uh, it will not improve the conditions in my country. And to follow the traditional path, from getting a degree in economics to working for a multinational company for six years, then uh, becoming uh, an entrepreneur and uh, and uh, raising children, trying to send them to the uh, best in, uh, schools and try to live in an exclusive subdivision, go to church on Sunday and give to charity. That was the useful formula. I realized that that was not enough, that uh, it was not about charity. It was not just about pity or mercy. It was about solidarity. Uh, poverty is... Uh, is cost when we when there is lack of human dignity this is uh, lack of uh, justice when development uh, keeps on leaving the weak and the powerless behind so then I realized that my own family my children will have no future in this country unless I do something with gang members, drug dealers, and I focus on working with the men because most poverty interventions were always about women. Microfinance is about women, microenterprises women. Many of the uh, educational programs are women. But I, working in the slums, I saw that the men are the criminals. The rebels in the countries are men. The cause of domestic violence are men. So if men are the problem, we should also, they should also be part of the solution. So I engage them in sports and uh, eventually started to build the first Gawad Kalinga community because the, the builders of homes are men. Those who build the roads and the toilets and the, the schools are men. But of course the women are the nurturers of the home. So what I wanted was uh, more complementary. So it's not because normally when in the slums, the women uh, are the ones who have to take on whatever job was uh, possible just to be able to, because they will never abandon the children, but the men would be drinking, would be gambling, would be abandoning their duties. So I felt that the problem of poverty was a behavioral problem with an economic consequence. So when we built the first village, the most immediate impact was peace. The men started to drink less and started to look for work after building the homes because now they feel a sense of pride and honor. And so they felt also that they have the capacity to help themselves. So they started to have, a, a, you know, to understand the value of self-reliance through hard work. So we realized that it's not really, you don't start with livelihood. You start with <laughs> restoring human dignity. Because a human being, when he lives like in an animal pen, he will think and behave like an animal. So the, the goal of development for me is simply to restore the, their humanity. When you transform ugly slums into beautiful communities, you turn also criminals and idle men into peaceful and hardworking uh, citizens. First of all, by building them in this community, we brought them out of extreme poverty to moderate poverty. Now this is a middle class community, so they have now middle class aspirations. And then all you have to do now is to bring in entrepreneurs who can do business plans, who can give access to market, cash flow management, marketing strategies, etc. to work with them. So you, you can now really just, instead of just always thinking micro or just livelihood projects, we're now really looking at possibilities that, 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 they, that the businesses we set up here can become a market leader. Because you have the genius of the rich connecting with the genius of the poor. You know, and the poor is no longer just laborer, but he's a partner. Because all businesses here, 30%, has to, to be, their, their shares are owned by the poor. Don't measure everything by money, you know, but uh, we measure everything by, 
like we have a 92% hope index. <laughs> we have the one of the highest, you know, happiness index. People here, you know, are able, you know, they cannot understand you. You don't have uh, a lot of money, but you're happy. You know, because we have clean air, <laughs> because we are free, and because we have family. We support one another. We help one another. We smile every day. So now if we improve, we improve that with education, we improve that by, by creating more jobs, paying them more, maybe we have to be very careful that with, with prosperity doesn't come a lot of devices, doesn't come a lot of the drugs and all the, and all the, 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 uh, the vanity and all the luxury that can really make people miserable. power of caring you know and to be rich is when you give you, you make everyone around you rich then you don't need anything for yourself and also the value of freedom the freedom to do good because every morning when I wake up I have a choice either to be happy or to be miserable I choose to be happy <laughs> you know every morning when I wake up I have a choice to be either to complain or to be part of the solution I choose to be part of the solution. Every morning when I wake up, I have a choice whether to look at the glass as half empty or half full. I look at it as half full and I will fill it up. So I'm a radical optimist. I go to the most dangerous places to make them safer. I'm doing this, you know, because my life is not my own. I, I, was, I was created for a purpose and I want to, to give my all to that purpose. This is my life. It's a simple life, but it is a happy life.